He's a former NBA player, a Virginia Tech legend, and the starting point guard for the Illawarra Hawks. He's Justin Robinson, and this is Bear Your Souls, presented by Culture King. Justin, thanks so much for having us here today to talk through your sneaker collection. Yeah, thank you for having me. I'm excited. I'm excited. How did you first get into sneakers? Um, it really all started with my brother. My brother was a big uh, sneakerhead growing up. He's seven years older than me, so uh, he always had the sneakers when they would drop, and then he would get them for me. And then I remember vividly uh, when the Space Jam's released, they have like the overnight laying in the malls at home. So we went through that together, and ever since then, I just took off with it. And was it sort of growing up in those early years, it was all just Jordans? Yeah, more so, more so Jordans because that was kind of like the hype thing. I mean, obviously there was like that scary point in time like in the US where like people were camping out overnight and bad things were happening, like uh, violence. But I mean, that's kind of where I got into it through my brother. Tell me about these 12s you got here. You got the flu games? Yeah, classic. The, the, the classic flu games. Uh, obviously hit the shot and played well in that game. It was a little sick, but I mean, just the idea to have those was kind of like cool in the collection. I actually wore those in college uh, on Valentine's Day, kind of like the pink red collab. So, I wanted to ask you about that. You went to Virginia Tech for college. You wore a lot of classic Jordans. What what went into that? Was it just you wanted to play in the, the old school shoes? Were they comfy? Uh, I don't know so much comfort. I think in college, my big goal was to not wear the same shoe twice in the season. So I think I did good at that. I tried to switch out every game. And then you've gone from there. I know you're wearing a lot of Kobe's now. Is that your go-to shoe on the court? Yeah, I think so. I mean, obviously, Team Nike is the way to go, but Kobe's is definitely like the most comfortable. And that was kind of like someone that when I got to the NBA, I wanted to meet um, and sadly passed away. So I kind of just try to, you know, play through it and have his mentality and certain things that I do. And just obviously it looks good and feels good. So you told me before you were um, Isaiah Thomas was one of your vets and he was on Team Kobe. How is that sort of being under him and getting all those collaborations as a result? Yeah, it's actually dope. How all that came about. Uh, like I always used to watch his documentaries in college and then I got injured and he actually reached out to me when I got injured. So it kind of was cool to know that he was watching college games and knew who I was. And then it comes around rookie year, he's my teammate. So, I mean, we clicked, he kind of taught me like the small things about the NBA and kind of how to stick around and go, go through the madness and all that. And then it just kind of grew. He knew I was in the shoes. We kind of wore the same size. So he just took me under his wing as his uh, little protege, I guess, and uh, yeah, so. And you were saying this pair here is actually a pair of his PAs, yeah? Yeah, so uh, obviously he would get the Team Kobe things and those are the Wizards colors, so every time the equipment guy would come in with a box of his shoes, he would always tell him to put one at mine, so that's something I couldn't really uh, be more grateful of him and we're still in contact with today, so. Absolutely, man. And then what are your, what are some of your more recent favorite Kobe's? You got the Mamba Cedars there. Probably those EYBL ones and then the Mama Cita ones, obviously, and then uh, I think there's a couple more at home, like the Undefeated Pack. I like those a lot. And then how did your sneaker collection and just the culture open up when you got to the NBA? Um, I just think you have more accessibility to things, obviously. You meet more people. You kind of go into the realm of like having more access to things and sort of fashion, shoes, and just networking. So I think, obviously, getting a little bit more money too was kind of helpful in being able to make those connections and get those shoes. Who out of all the NBA players you've played with, who's the biggest sneakerhead you've witnessed? Probably Shea. Shea has them all. Um, I mean, he's like the fashion icon of the NBA right now. So I think his ability to just have the access to certain things and obviously his new contract, congrats to him. He has the ability to buy them as well. And then you come out here, came to Australia in the NBL. What was it like? You've got a massive collection back in the States. How did you choose which ones to bring out over here? It's hard, man. I mean, it is hard. Like I got a big uh, storage space down in the basement of shoes and in the room. So I think just trying to stay like the red color for the Hawks and then kind of have like some neutrals and a little bit of, I guess like big time shoes that people would say. And then like not too much of a, a statement shoe to where if I wear them more than once, everybody's like, oh, look, at I don't like that. So. Um, and what do you think about sneaker culture in the NBL versus the NBA? Um, it's a little different. I mean, like, obviously people get their kicks on court, but I think, like, the tunnel fit stuff is a little bit different in the U.S. compared to here, where people don't put so much effort into what they're wearing coming into games as we, like, we take a, a pride in that back home, so. 
And has that made you relax a little bit or almost go the other way and be like, you really want to own it and be like top dog? Uh, I think it's made me want to own it. Obviously last year I didn't have the chance with the injury as much, but I think this year I got some stuff cooking up, so. Once you I noticed you wore a lot, were these ones last year when you were on the sidelines? Yeah. What was that like having to go through the first season with the Hawks not being able to play? Um, it was tough. Obviously, that wasn't my goal or plan when I was coming out here was not to get injured. Obviously, to have a good year and see where it took me. But I think, I mean, not to like say it's positive. I mean, I got to show a little bit of fashion, the sense of it. Um, obviously, there's certain things that you have to wear on the sideline. But I think just kind of being myself and being able to know I can affect the game without bouncing the basketball it kind of like helped me and things like that. So, I mean, I took pride in wearing some shoes into the arena that time, but that's really about it. One question I like to ask everyone on the show is if you have like one special shoe related to a, a big memory or moment, most of them have them here. Obviously yours would be over in mm -hmm. the States, but it, do you have that shoe, that old one stashed away somewhere? Yeah, so now it's turned into two. So I used uh, the Taco Kyrie's. I broke my foot in those my senior year. So my very first game in the NBA, I wore them again to like kind of tell a story with it. And then last year I had on the all black Kobe's, the Kobe fives um, in that game that I got injured. So I mean, those are stashed away at home. I don't think I'll ever give those away just because of the story it tells. Like obviously I don't think it's bad luck, but something I wouldn't want to give away. And then what's your grail shoe? What's the one shoe you haven't been able to track down yet that you really want? I have two. Uh, I'd probably say the the red October Yeezys, the originals, and then the what the dunks for sure. There I got a little package from Culture King. Oh, that's hard. Oh, this is dope. A little corduroy LA, LA jacket. Yeah, that's gonna go perfect with the hat. My company just made both corduroy. Culture King's fire. Let's get to the shoes. These shoes. Okay, black and white starter pair. I can dig those. I can dig those. Another pair of the black and white. Okay, but this is right here. There's gotta be something, right? Oh yeah, that's fine. That's right up my right up my alley. I was just thinking about buying these too. Um, I want to say good luck for the rest of the season and thank you so much for coming on the yeah, show. Thank you, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah.